You time you thought you were recording and it turns out you weren't. <sighs> Hello and welcome to today's episode of Tiffany Unpacks in Portland. In today's episode we're opening box number or games number 18 playmat comma dice, which I don't know if you can tell is a medium sized U-Haul box. All the other boxes that we've opened so far have been smalls. This is a medium because uh, some games were so large that they needed like a medium sized length. So let's see what's in here aside from playmat comma dice that needed to be in a medium sized box. Aha, yes. Of course. Alright, well, so first off, um, it's just like it says on the tin. We have some dice. Uh, this is a deck box container with a jelly bean bag in it that has some dice. This is Steve's. Um, and then we have a bag full of just dice and one that has escaped. I believe this is mine from um, playing five liar's dice. Um, I used to take this to bars with solo cups, because, yeah. I actually, yeah, anyway, all right. Um, then we have some just plain old playing cards, because they're great um, for prototyping ideas, and also sometimes you just want to play Texas Hold'em or something. So there we go. Um, more card sleeves. <laughs> we have my um, preview copy of Bomb Squad. This was actually a demo copy at Gym Con. I don't know why I said Gen Con. I almost said Gen Con. This was a preview copy at Gen Con, um, and they went ahead and gave it to me for filming the video that I filmed for them for their Kickstarter page. Um, so yeah, this was a lot of fun to go through airport security with because it has a kitchen timer inside of it, and it says Bomb Squad on the side of it, and it's a vanilla envelope. Oh, yep. Fun game. Um, I'm really excited to get the like full size version of this game. These are my D&D dice. Uh, this is one of the first proof of concept dice bags that I made. Um, you can find my dice bag tutorial clicking on here or down in the doobly doo. And you can learn how to make this beautiful lined dice bag that holds quite a number of dice. Aha! This is our playmat from, um, I believe it's Grip Mats? Break from Reality um, Grip Mats. We got this at Gen Con, and it's four feet by four feet, so it fits right in the middle of our game table, and we like it quite a bit. Uh, it's kind of annoying when you play games that like have the shift where you you slide like the market to the right or something because it's really hard to slide cards on this, which is what you want, except for when you don't want it. So I will probably do a product review of that mat eventually because I do like it. It's yeah, maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Who knows. Then we have the bigger blacker box. Um, so I used to play Cards Against Humanity quite a lot because it was the only game that I could get my friends to play with me. Um, I've since leveled up their taste and I've also leveled up my friends. <laughs> so, but I do have almost, I haven't gotten the last few expansions, but I have enough that this is almost full. There's two foam core dividers in it. Um, my family or Steve would get me the Christmas one occasionally. At this point, I hold on to it because I do still have the few select friend groups that will only play this game with me. And we do have fun. We don't usually... We remove a lot of the cards that are just not appropriate. Um, so yeah, also, these are really helpful for uh, doing print and plays and prototype games because these cards are really straightforward, they're good quality cards, and you just put them behind uh, print-offs of paper and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. I do have Cards Against Humanity. I'm not exactly thrilled about it, but I have it. So, there's that. I wonder, does it fit? No. <clears throat> we'll just, we'll just do... We'll just do that. Which makes it look like it has a place of pride, but it shouldn't. Um, here we have an empty duck box. Um, we have a copy of Minnesota, the original Pocket Fargle. Um, Fargle is just a pressure luck dice rolling game. It's kind of like Yahtzee in a pocket. Uh, I got it because 
I actually didn't get this. My mom got this for me on a trip, probably to Minnesota, I would guess. So I've had this for a really long time, and if I'm going on a trip and I'm not really sure the situation on games or whatnot, this is one that I'll throw in my backpack. Um, it fits in an old school film canister, so, yep. Um, we have, uh, this is Steve's pocket magnet chess game. You know, the old school one where you open it up and then, yeah. Um, we took this to France with us just in case we wanted to play chess. And then um, for some, we took it to the top of the Eiffel Tower and Steve proposed to play a game with me at the top, but he like, he like set up the board and then he got on one knee and like proposed um, to play the game with me. And like when he went down on one knee, like he didn't propose we didn't he didn't propose for like marriage then I did that later but um like it was funny because we're like there's a bunch of tourists and people around and then like he goes down on one knee and then there's just like this crowd just like the whole crowd goes and like we're just alone in this space laughing about this um so we played chess at the top of the Eiffel Tower at like almost midnight uh when we were in Paris in April so this chess set while we might not ever play with it again has really fond memories because of that. Um, next up in this box, we have a random purple timer that I think came from a cranium game? Well, it came from China. Um, adult supervision advice for children under five years old. Um, but yeah, it's I believe it's from a cranium game and I have it because you never know when you need a sand timer. Um, cockroach poker. I love Cockroach Poker. I really, really do love Cockroach Poker, and I did a review of Cockroach Poker that you can find um, by clicking on the box or a link down the doobly doo. This is a great party game. Maggie, uh, aka MaggieBot, introduced this to me, and I absolutely love it. It's a good bluffing game. It's two to six players. You can play it uh, 20, 30 minutes. I don't know. Usually when I'm playing it, we're playing it in a group setting and there's a lot of chatter and talk and stuff like that. And so it usually takes a little bit longer, but that's because we're like having a lot of side conversations while we play it. So cockroach poker. Also, uh, oddball air nuts. This is the first edition copy, I believe. Yeah. Um, the game's actually not in here Ooh, because I got the, uh, I backed at the Kickstarter level to get the 10. Um, and my copy is in a tin someplace, which I may have already unpacked, um, because it goes and it lives in like my backpack, so I can, I can like pull it out and play it whenever I want. But this is the, um, this is the actual box that it came in, uh, and I guess I just have it, I don't know why I kept it. But it's a two player game, 15 minutes, I did a review for them, a preview for them, preview review for them. Uh, click the box if you want to watch it, or a link down in the video. Right! Um, so this is, I don't know what this is. This is Eve, the second Genesis, the Great War starter kit. Um, this is Steve's, because I don't know what it is. But I, it's a collectible card game created by the developers of the award-winning MMORG Eve Online. Ooh, includes two starter decks, coins, and rulebook. That's interesting. I will have to have him teach me how to play that. Um, we are, I don't know if you mentioned, I mentioned it briefly on the first episode. Steve and I are going to start a two-player series of videos where we just uh, talk about and maybe do some playthroughs of two-player games and we rate them and all this other stuff. Um, so I'm really excited to play interesting little things like this for that series. Um, then we have this bag. This bag is my Power Grid Robots um, and the Power Grid expansion More more Power Grids deck. Um, each is playing with ball, that's why her collar is jingling. Uh, the reason it's in a bag and not in the Power Grid box is because I... Uh, this was in my first edition, well, my regular edition Power Grid, and then I ended up trading that in the charity auction because I now have the Power Grid Deluxe copy, and so I had packed the Power Grid Deluxe before I remembered that I had the robots in the expansion deck. So I had to like take them out and put them someplace, and then when I find Power Grid Deluxe, these, these guys will go in that box. So that's what's happening there. Um, this is In the City Origins. I got this at Gen Con two years ago. Uh, at the time, uh, it's by Duncan Davis, and he was kickstarting at the time. His kickstarter was not successful. 
and he relaunched, I'm not sure if it was successful then. It's two to five players. Um, I really like the design of it. I really like how you you you're trying to basically gain control of the city um, and there's different factions and you can have sway and stuff like this. It's very interesting. I like it. He um, he used a lot of classic art um, that you can get with licenses, um, like old school, old school art, um, classic art that you can use. And then there's a card creator that's based off of Magic the Gathering and he used that and modified the styles to make his cards. So the cards, like the graphic design and stuff are not super great and the card art isn't always necessarily spot on with the theme of the card but the mechanics are great um and so i have this game and i do enjoy it then we have snake oil snake oil is a party game um for how many players is this three to ten players um you're just trying to sell people on things so somebody has a card it's very i mean it's it's that whole model of there's a judge and then there's people doing things to try and win. Um, in this case the judge is hiring, or the judge is uh, buying a certain type of product or is a certain, the judge is a certain audience? What is this? Oh, the judge is just a certain customer. Right, so the judge is a certain customer and then everybody else has these cards and they combine them together to make some sort of fictional product. So for example, a caveman would need a beard brush, right? Like, and then somebody else could be like stone paint, and somebody else could just be like, you need a snow machine. So, um, and but you have to pitch it and do a sales pitch. So it's a really fun one. Um, it's really fun. You can act it out. You can be as serious as you want or as not serious as you want. So yeah, this is a good one in that genre. Um, we have the rules for the robots expansion. Um. This, oh, hey. Um, this is my Pocket Travel Mancala set. Um, you can't see it, but it's in there. Um, and then this is my Mancala set from when I was a little girl. Um, and you can tell because there's a piglet sticker on the front. Um, I really enjoy Mancala. If I didn't have a cat, I would just constantly have a Mancala set out. But Abby likes to take the McCollagens out of their bowl because it's a very nice Scooby bowl and uh, just scatter them throughout the house. So, boom. Um, so this is Legacy Gears of Time. This is like all of. Oh wait, no, this one's no, this one's not right. All these box lids are wrong. So this game is a time traveling card game where you are trying to. Um, you're manipulating time by like traveling back in time to build your own legacy about how awesome you are. Um, I've only played it once and we played it wrong. So we still had fun, but we didn't really enjoy it. And it like, well, we had fun playing, but we didn't have fun with, with like how long the game took. Um, so we need to better read the rules and try it again. But I'm a sucker from time travel, so I'm very interested in this and getting this back to the table. Um, I'm really ashamed to say there's a lot of shrink-wrapped games in here, but before I pull them out, I'll just pull out these. Um, these are some more playing card decks. I'm a big space nerd. Um, my grandfather actually worked for NASA, and so I've been to the Kennedy Space Center quite frequently. I've seen a lot of shuttle launches, rocket launches, various kind of launches. Um, I've been like in the shuttle, all this other jazz. So. I have my NASA playing cards because if I wasn't a board gamer, I'd be an astronaut. Not sure that's how that works. Um, Hong Kong uh, playing card. When I was uh, 18, I went to Hong Kong uh, on an internship and worked for the University of Hong Kong Science and Technology doing some stuff. And so this is my like souvenir from that trip because that's better pictures than I could take. And then um, also, spring break in college one year, a uh, friend and I went to Germany because his mom lived there and we did a castle tour. And so this is, this is my, this is my souvenir from that. So can you tell, I like souvenirs that are like things I can play with from places. So yeah, um, okay. Then this is a Steve game and it's, it's seen better days, but this is the Flames of War. It's a World War II miniatures game. Um, I believe it's it's either one or two players. How many players is this? Box designers, get your stuff together! Come on. I honestly have no idea. 
I'm guessing it's two player because there's British and American forces and there's German forces. Um, I don't know much about this game. Steve has a very, whoa. Steve has a thing about collecting old school or like hard to find war games. Oh, he hasn't even like opened this. Um, but um, he can tell you a lot about him and we've talked about potentially him doing like a mini series on my channel about war games and solo games and his experiences and maybe even doing some playthroughs. So if that interests you and you would like to see that, um, go ahead and leave a comment down below and uh, Steve will see those comments. I am, I am sure of it. I will make him see those comments. So yeah. Okay, um, so the rest of this box is shrink wrapped and I feel really bad about that, but at the same point, I don't feel that bad because a lot of these are Kickstarters. So, um, this one isn't shrink wrapped, but I've still yet to play it. It's uh, Trojan, uh, Trojan, Trojan, Trojan. I don't know. Uh, it's a Steppenfeld game. I've read the rules. I want to play it. I really want to play it. Um, also, Steffenfeld, I have Aquasphere. This is my Kickstarter copy of Aquasphere, and um, it arrived right when we were starting to do the Moving Chaos, so it just it hasn't been opened. I really, really want to play it. I cracked it. I almost cracked it open several times, but it's kind of like if it's in the shrink, I won't break into it when I should be doing something else. That's my excuse. Um, then we have Tragedy Looper, which I actually picked up at Gen Con. So this has been in shrink for a very long time. Um, I got really intimidated by the rules, and I've just been waiting for somebody to teach me. But it's I need to. I just I think I need to sit down and, and learn it myself, and then maybe I'll make a how to play video. So, yeah. Um, then I have another. Is this also a stuff? In, no, this is a Rudiger Dorn, uh, Il Vicio. Uh, which is a tasty Mitchell game. Um, Rudiger Dorn, Steve and I have discovered that we really like his games, specifically Las Vegas and Istanbul. So when we realized we owned another one of his games, because yes, we didn't realize that we owned another one of his games, uh, we were excited to play this and try this out. Um, so we have to we have to crack that eventually. We have to crack a lot of things. This is another Steppenfeld. This is Rialto. This is another Tasty Mitchell Games. Can you see I have a lot of Tasty Mitchell Games? That's because I helped them out at Gen Con um, with that Kickstarter video for Bomb Squad, and so one of the ways Michael repaid me was he just gave me a copy of every game in their collection that I hadn't had yet, and that was my payment for making their Kickstarter video, and I was okay with that. So, yeah, that's why I have a lot of still shrinked Tasty Mitchell Games. Speaking of, this one I actually paid for. This I paid for, it's Captains of Industry by um, Michael R. Keller, and I got this when I got the City Hall game. So, yeah, um, I'm hoping to crack these open and play them. Um, I'm really thinking we're gonna have a shrink wrap of shame shelf, and just, it's gonna have to be a thing where we play shrink wrap games. So, yeah. Um, there was a lot of games in this box because it was larger than usual. Um, so, I hope that you're still with me, and I hope that you found something interesting, uh, or saw something interesting, or something. I know I wasn't super helpful on these games because they're shrinked, but, you know, whatever. You're basically just watching me unpack at this point, and I hope I don't cut myself. Oh. Actually, I have cut myself this move. I, uh, I got myself a really good slice on my pointer finger two weeks ago, and um, I should have probably gone to an urgent care and gotten it looked at, but my sister is a pediatrician, so I just called her and sent her a picture of it, and she was like, do some liquid stitch and butterfly stitches and you'll be fine, and clean it really well, so yeah. Yay for sisters with medical degrees. <laughs> All right, see you later guys.